a joy it is to be talking about the autumnal equinox. The purpose of this video is to talk about what the autumnal equinox is to ceremonial magicians, specifically to Thelemites, and provide you with my personal take on it. I will be talking about what it represents symbolically, as well as some hands-on ways to celebrate and make the most out of this time of the year. I think practitioners from all walks of life and paths can get something from this video. So let's get started. I'm Mavius Lynn. I'm a practicing occultist, ceremonial magician, and here on my YouTube channel I talk about the occult with a focus on Western esotericism and ceremonial magic. I'm so excited to talk about the autumnal equinox today with you all. But before we begin, as always, I have a quick little note, and that's all the views and opinions expressed here are my own. There's a wide variety and diversity of opinions out there and thoughts and ideas, and that's fantastic. Um, so this is just me sharing some of my own, and hopefully that inspires you all to go out and enrich your lives with new ideas, new ways to be creative, and specifically today about the autumnal equinox. A good place to start is of course defining what the equinox is. The equinox is when day and night are of equal length. It occurs twice a year in the spring and the fall. The equinox can be thought of as a significant marcher on the seasonal march to winter. It's a balancing point between light and dark, illumination and shadow, what is visible and what is hidden. It is a point along the axis of change in the rhythm of nature. There is a lot to say about this, but before we get too far, let's narrow in on why specifically Thelemites are so interested in the equinox. I'll give you two reasons. The first is, of course, in our central sacred holy text, the Book of the Law. In the second chapter of this book, it states to celebrate rituals of the elements and feasts of the times. So let me just read you that exact quote right out of there for you. But ye, O my people, rise up and awake. Let the rituals be rightly performed with joy and beauty. There are rituals of the elements and feasts of the times. And there it is. So of course it's referencing all of them at once, um, but the fall equinox is of course, in there, under that category, specifically when it mentions of the elements and feasts of the times. So there it is. That's our, specifically we're interested as our central sacred holy text does call for us to celebrate that in particular. And of course, it's not just that. This book lays out a variety of feasts or celebrations or holy days or holidays throughout the year um, to observe or celebrate. And of course, you're not more or less of a Thelemite or magician if you choose not to celebrate them or don't have time to celebrate them, uh, but it is in there as a source of inspiration if you choose to do so. A second reason why we're so interested in the equinox, and this is sort of my opinion happening here, is it really goes back to how Aleister Crowley laid out the definition of what magic is. He says, magic is the art and science of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Let's circle back to that word science. Yes, science is a method by which to accept or disregard new information understanding, but it is also a system that implores us to pay attention to nature and that divine expression throughout nature itself. Divinity expresses itself within us, but also through nature and all of us around surroundings that we have in our life. So that includes the rhythm and patterns. So it's an extra way to bring that into our lives and into our perspectives as we go through time. So science is also a big part of that, uh, including all of the ways we experience the world and come to understand the world around us. What does the equinox represent? The equinox represents balance. It is a point along the march from the bounty of summer and the late harvest season into the cold and dead winter. It is an expression of the ever-changing rhythms of nature. As humans, of course, we are tied to these rhythms of nature as we progress through the seasons and as well as how we progress through our lives. The autumnal equinox implores us to mindfulness of the balance not only in nature, but also our lives, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, 
all of these things. It's a time of transition, contemplation, gratitude, and reflection. It's a time that is so significant in a lot of different traditions, and for good reason. It's nature prompting us to examine the forces within us and to return to that state of balance. It's a time primed for magical workings of all different kinds, as well as celebrations. You don't need a holy book to tell you that, but of course it helps. <laughs> Which, of course, brings me to my next point. What are some ways people celebrate the autumnal equinox? Well, there's a lot. But again, let's narrow that down to ceremonial magic and specifically Thelema. Traditionally speaking, Aleister Crowley pulled oracles that served as passwords for the AA and symbolized the magical headwinds for the next six months. So these oracles would have been pulled twice a year. For those who don't know, the AA isn't referencing Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm referencing the magical order that Aleister Crowley established. It was a magical teaching order, specifically. So, that brings us to today. What do ceremonial magicians do now? Well, we still pull oracles and consult those oracles. Uh, these oracles can be for one's group, or they can be drawn more personally and in private, perhaps, for personal direction. Of course, secret societies can still utilize this selection for new passwords, as well as interpreting oracles for omens, representing the work that needs to be best undertaken within the next six months. So, of course, I'm talking about secret societies, a lot of orders that still exist today, as well as new ones that have come about. Uh, but this also applies to individuals. There's no reason that you can't participate this on your own, uh, maybe within your family, with your partner, or even in local groups. So that brings me to what the heck are oracles and what are some ideas specifically that you can utilize? So if you're selecting oracles for the autumnal equinox, whether it's for your own or for a group that you're a part of, you have a few options. And you have quite a wide world out there of oracles, ideas, and selections, and ways to do divination. Um, but these are just some ideas and my suggestions. So uh, you can use bibliomancy in the Book of the Law to select a word. That word can serve as something to meditate on for the next six months or serve as a forecast. Of course, traditionally, if you're doing it for a group, this would be your password. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how I do a reading um, out of the Book of the Law for Bibliomancy, but you can do it however you feel is best and however is appropriate. What I am doing in these videos, of course, is inspiration and not gospel. And before I begin, I just want to go back to what I was talking about earlier about science. And it goes back to hopefully you're keeping a log or book of shadows or a record of your magical workings and things through time so you can see what works best for you personally. And as I always say, you know, we, when we go to the store, we all buy not only different styles of shoe, but different sizes. And when we go to the doctor, we all go in with different, you know, issues and the doctor doesn't prescribe one treatment for every single person and every single issue, right? We're all getting different advice from doctors. So it would make sense that since we're all different people, our magical lives and what works and what doesn't work for us it would also look very different. And so maybe the things I'm talking about today don't resonate with you and that's totally valid and totally fine. And I would argue that uh, a great magician, uh, part of that is of course figuring out what works and knowing what doesn't. So anyway, back to bibliomancy. So I grab my book of the law, and as you see, I am using a really um, not super fancy edition of the book of the law, because this one sees a lot of abuse, and I'd recommend getting a paperback and not um, a hardcover book that might be a little bit easier to sort of flip through, but that's, again, that's really up to you, and I'm using the book of the law because I'm talking about ceremonial magic and specifically Thelema, but you know, you could really use any book that speaks to you, uh, even, even a work of fiction. Um, but so yeah, I grab my book and then what I next do is I will close my eyes and I will take a brief pause and bring myself back and ground myself to what I'm doing here. And of course I'm talking through it on video for you all, but um, I'd be reflecting on the fall, the changing of the seasons, that point, that balance between light and dark. And I would turn inward for guidance 
or whatever sort of inspiration or guidance I am calling upon or you call upon. And I would ask for what I need to know for the next six months. And I would then begin to flip through this book with those thoughts in the back of my head. And eventually I'd get to a good place, so I just chose three. The amount of times you flip through can, of course, um, be significant as well. Four and five. Okay, that sounds good. And then I would come to a place that felt right. And then I would just sort of feel the pages and see which one is feeling like it's calling to me. Okay, this one feels right. And then I would move, once I've found my page, it's going to be this page on the book. I'm going to move my hand down there and just sort of let my fingers feel the page and see what's calling to me. Okay, so I found something. Wow, this is really cool. Okay, so this is what I landed on. I landed on the word fear. So if I was doing this officially, a batteries on and not as a demonstration for you all, um, that would be my word selected. So there's an example. Additionally, uh, you can do a whole bunch of oracles, uh, but a lot of people love to pull tarot cards. And a lot of people are familiar with the Rider-Waite-Smith system. And of course, um, if you are interested um, to, in working with the 93 current or the energies of the current Aeon, I'm going to recommend getting um, a tarot deck in, in line with the current Aeon. So that has to do with the Libra Zadi switch and all of that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and give a, a, a general recommendation for the Thoth deck. Uh, this deck is in line with the current Aeon. And additionally, I want to show you all, look at my baby Thoth deck. Um, so I have a big one and a baby. I use the baby for more like travel kind of stuff. It, it's, it's small, it's compact, it fits in a purse, I'm good. Uh, but, you know, officially for something like the Equinox, um, I would use this larger one because, you know, you can just see the art a lot better and it's just a little bit easier to, to work with than like a baby deck. Uh, so let me just like take this out and show you what I mean. So I got the Ace of Wands, uh, which is not me actually pulling a tarot card. I just want to show you what I mean by the art. There's a lot of depth here, a lot to unpack, um, a lot of dense symbolism. And of course, when you're reading this deck, uh, you, you want to pay attention to the numbers, uh, to the letters, everything here and what that means, as well as the colors. Those are also really important. Um, but I could do a whole video on uh, the Thoth deck, which I'm not going to do. Um, but I do want to talk about this in the context of pulling a tarot card uh, for the occasion and as an oracle. So there's a lot of different ways to pull tarot cards. And again, uh, do what works for you and do what feels right to you. Uh, you know, use the scientific method. If, if, if Even if there is a really popular, um, you know, occultist you really like or something like that, and they do it one certain way, that doesn't mean you have to do it that way. And that's okay. Um, hopefully uh, you can get to a place where you feel comfortable and confident and however you shuffle the deck and choose your tarot cards. And hey, maybe you want to use um, different decks uh, of different systems. I mean, that's a really cool idea too. So I did quite a bit of rambling here, but um, I want to quickly mention a couple other ideas that may serve as inspiration. Uh, some other things I want to mention are selecting a rune at this time of the year or performing divination through geomancy. And honestly, any kind of system or tools you use for divination would be absolutely appropriate. So your mileage may vary. And um, yeah, I hope you found something, an idea that would be really cool to apply. Selecting oracles isn't the only thing you can do for the autumnal equinox. So here's a few more ideas from me. Additionally, it's a great time to give thanks and celebrate with a feast with family and friends. My mind returns back to this idea of the rhythms of nature. It's a time of the fall harvest and a time for gathering. What better way to give thanks for the things in our life than to celebrate with a feast? An ongoing theme I think you'll notice of a lot of my videos and thelemic gatherings or celebrations in general uh, is food. Like everyone else, uh, we love a good party and food and company. Um, I think the Aeon of Horus implores us to find joy and beauty and celebrate the divinity within us all. So, of course, what better way to do this than with a feast? Um, another thing, additionally, uh, with a feast or party with your friends and family you can do is a ritual or meditation. 
ritual and meditation are both things that go hand in hand, uh, so you can do both or either, uh, but you don't have to do both, right? You can choose with all of these things. Um, the autumnal equinox, as far as rituals go, has a dual nature, so which that can work really well with rituals, especially a ritual that works in harmony with this and really captures that dual nature. Uh, for example, a ritual built around Hades and Persephone comes to mind, uh, but really look inward at what you need to achieve that balance and what you're looking to get out of that ritual, but it's certainly a great time for a variety of different workings. Um, additionally, meditation is fantastic, so you can do that meditation in combination with that ritual or just on its own. And a great thing to think about for that meditation is this idea of balance, light and dark, not just within nature where we exist, but also internally. Ask yourself in your life, external as well as internal, what is in balance and what isn't? What can you change about your life or things about how you operate or think even that will bring you more into balance. Of course, as a cultist or practitioners of various forms, um, this is a huge goal of, our, goal of ours, right? Uh, this is a reflection of the great work and other things where we, we seek this balance. We seek to unite these opposites. It doesn't have to be your work, but if it is, um, let's return to it, you know? And, and these are just some prompts and ideas of, of things you can bring into your day to utilize this time and the space of the equinox and the autumnal equinox um, to bring you closer to that. So just to recap, here are the three things, which are really uh, more than three things, but three main things that can be further divided down that I suggest and ideas of ways to celebrate the equinox. The first one being Pull and consult oracles that serve to reflect the magical headwinds for the next six months. Of course, this can be done in a group or part of a secret society, but it can also be done alone and as a solo practitioner. There's no reason you have to do this in a group. This includes bibliomancy, pulling a tarot card, a rune, or divination through geomancy. The second thing being giving thanks and having a feast with friends and family. The third being ritual and meditation around the idea of balance. What is in balance in your life and what isn't? What can you change to bring about that balance going forward? Thank you for joining me today as I talked all about the autumnal equinox. I gave a definition, formal, informal. I talked a lot about the symbolism as well as some ideas to celebrate. Hopefully some ways you can incorporate that into your celebrations and whether it be alone or in a group, I hope it serves you well. Before we get going, I'd like to read a quick little excerpt from this fantastic book. I just think it's so lovely. I set my face to the dark. I will travel with the sun through the dark. I will go with confidence in the deepest dark. Though about me the dark may grow, the gods are always at my side, guiding me to light. And of course, how you view the gods is up to you personally, but I just thought it was such a beautiful way to wrap this video up and sort of get us thinking and going forward. So as always, Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And always, I am the center of expression for the primal will to good and so are you. Mm -hmm.